Hello, hello. My name is Alvaro Perez and welcome to another video tutorial on how to use Adobe Illustrator for KDP. Um, today we're going to be taking a deeper look at the Shape Builder tool and how I use it to create some of the assets that you guys have seen in my videos. I also use those same assets in my um, products. Um, I apologize in advance. Uh, this video might be slightly longer than the others um, and that's because I've been having these great conversations with you guys. Um, in the KDB 21 day challenge group and I'm trying to implement some of the suggestions that you guys have uh, given me so please keep those suggestions coming um, for example um, Richard B suggested that I talk a little bit about how I would take an image that I purchased uh, from a site or sourced from a site uh, and what I would do to make it my own also, uh, Jamie Lee suggested uh, that I show a little bit more about my workflow. So I'm coming into this video not having very much set up, and I'm going to show you how I set up my document, how I save my document, uh, how I work with layers, that sort of thing. And um, also, um, Lynn Winnens uh, suggested that I maybe um, put a little more accent on my uh, cursor uh, movement so you guys can see what I'm actually doing on the screen. So I'm going to try to do that as well. Um, so thank you for those suggestions, and if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry, and please correct me in the comments below. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that you'll notice here is that I have four artboards set up. Um, these are four inches by five inches each, which is exactly one quarter the size of an eight by ten, and they have these uh, lightly tanned colored backgrounds. This is the template that I made for myself for when I'm spending a little bit of dedicated time on creating symbols. Okay, so this is so that I can work on four similar symbols at the same time. And the colored background is so that I can easily see what's going on with my white and black shapes. Um, it's a little difficult to see uh, if your white shapes are correct with a white background. So I give myself this very light neutral color to work on. There is an Artboards palette, which you can find right here, or on my workspace, it's right here. If you can't find it, go to Windows, and you'll find it there, um, where you can uh, create new artboards, duplicate your artboards, uh, delete artboards, um, just kind of work with them in general, reorder your artboards. Um, but I like to use this little bar that's already down here by default. If you click on this arrow here, it'll list your artboards for you, and you can have up to a 1,000 artboards. Um, so I have four here, so you can switch back and forth between them, uh, between which one you're focusing on. So I'm going to go back to number one here. So now I'm going to import an image that I've sourced from a public domain source so that I can use it as a reference point as, and as an inspiration, a guide, for a symbol that I want to create for myself. So I need to make sure that I have um, an active layer here. So I locked my background layer so that I wouldn't be moving these colored boxes around. So I'm going to click on New Layer. And then I can come up here to File and Place. And then you just navigate to wherever your images are. And so I'm going to select this one here. Click Place. The good thing about Place is you can drag it to as large as you want to fit your space. So I'll drag it about there. I'm going to increase the size of this just a little bit. Okay, so right now this image is a little bit uh, overwhelming at full opacity. So I'm going to go back to my Layers palette. And I'm going to double click on Layer 2, which is where this image is. And you'll see there's a checkbox that says Dim Images. So I'm going to click on that. It defaults to 50%. I'm going to change that to about 40%. i am going to click OK. And now you'll see this will be much easier to see what I'm doing on top of this image. So now I'm going to lock this image so I'm not moving that around. Create a new layer. OK, so I'm going to very quickly switch to Artboard 2. So I can give you a basic rundown of the different tools you have for creating shapes. So the first one is obviously your Rectangle tool. Okay, I'm going to click D to give it my default fill and stroke, and I'm going to increase the stroke to about 3, just so you can see it. So you can obviously create um, rectangles of different shapes and sizes. If you hold the shift key down while creating a rectangle, it will come out as a perfect square. Next, you have the rounded rectangle, okay, which gives you a radius for the corners. Now, uh, let me check something here. I believe, yeah, if you just use a regular rectangle, you can come up here, you see these green circles? You can actually grab that and create radiuses with that as well if you want to. But if you already know you need a rounded rectangle, then I would use the rounded rectangle tool. And the cool thing about this tool is while you're creating the shape, you can use your up and down arrows to change the radius of your corners. So uh, another handy trick here is I'm going to go to Select All on Active Artboard. And then I'm going to hit Delete to so give myself more space to keep talking. 
Uh, you guys are already familiar with the ellipse tool, right? You can obviously create uh, different ellipses, different sizes and proportions. Um, and also if you hold the shift key, you'll get a perfect circle. You have the polygon tool, which I think defaults to a hexagon. I'm not sure. Hold on. Give me a second here. And you'll see with that green um, outline that I have a hexagon. And if I press the up arrow, it adds sides. Down arrow to delete sides all the way down to a triangle, I believe. So I'm going to keep um, clicking up. And that's your polygon tool. The star tool is similar, except it has these concave elements. So I'll start to create a star here. And as I click the up arrow, I get more points to my star. And I've made um, assets uh, for stars with up to, I think, 50 or 100 points. So you can um, do whatever you want with this tool. So you can um, create any type of star that you want. You also have control over um, you know, how deep this recess is, right? You have an inner radius and you have an outer radius that you get to play with. So you have a radius for the uh, inner and outer points, okay? So you have all these different tools um, at your disposal. Oh, last but not least, you have the line tool. So obviously we need to create some lines to draw with, you know, use this line tool, okay? Now, this may not seem like much, but I teach college level drawing classes as well. And one of the first things I have to teach my students is to draw a complex form, you need to break it down into simple shapes. And that's exactly what Illustrator has done for you here. And also, if you feel somewhat limited by these choices, I would suggest that you let the limitations fuel your creativity. And that's true in any creative pursuit, right? So wherever there's a limitation, there's the opportunity to be creative and to uh, become a creative problem solver. Okay, so I'm going to go back to select all on active artboard. I'll delete, and then I'm going to go back to artboard number one. Uh, the first thing you need to remember is that uh, for the shape builder tool to be effective, you need your shapes to be overlapping, okay? So I'm going to work on this beetle, and um, never start with details. Start with the biggest shapes, and then you narrow it down from there, okay? So I'm going to start with a rounded rectangle, and I'm going to click here. Just create a shape. Um, I want to uh, decrease my radius until it roughly matches the one on this beetle. Okay, space bar to move this around, and then just uh, release. I'm actually going to cut my stroke down to two, so it's not so thick. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my ellipse tool. And I usually start creating my shapes off to the side and then move them into place. So I don't accidentally click on that last shape I was working with. Okay, I'm going to create an ellipse that roughly matches the shape that I have down here. Click and release. And then I'm going to add two more ellipses for these other shapes down here. So they're going to be longer and narrower. Space bar to move it into place. Release. And last one. Now, I'm not too worried about lining them up perfectly right now, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so now I'm going to take my rectangle tool, and I'm going to create this little segment that you see between, uh, I guess, the thorax and the abdomen here. So I'll create a rectangle. It doesn't have to be terribly tall. And I'll move it into place here. It can be a little daunting when you have a lot of shapes um, that you're creating in a small space. We're going to have to really zoom in to work with these shapes. Okay, so for this thorax here, normally I would take my ellipse tool and just create an ellipse for that. Right? Um, it's too wide. But in this case, I saw something when I was working with the star over here that I liked. So I'm going to actually try it and see how what I think about that. Um, let's see, I'll create this star. I'm going to hold the shift key so it stays um, perfectly vertical. Okay, now I'm going to come in here with my direct selection tool. I'm going to change the radius on it. And now you'll see that shape that I created. And I really like that shape for use as um, the thorax here. Okay, uh, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line. 
and I'm just going to create a line down the center here and I'm going to make it go past the entire image right so it starts above the image and it um, exceeds past the bottom edge of the image I'm going to hold shift down so it stays perfectly vertical and release okay so those are my basic shapes that I'm going to use to create the body of this beetle so first I want to align everything so I'm going to get my selection tool and create a bounding box around everything I'm going to go to my align panel which is right here and I'm going to align everything vertically and you'll see they all lined up perfectly in place okay now you don't want to accidentally hit um, I'm sorry that was aligned horizontally not aligned vertically I don't want to accidentally hit a line vertically because you'll see what happens here everything collapses into one perfect shape now that being said if I go and close uh, the eye on this layer check out that cool design shape you just made okay you know manipulate this a little bit cut the edges off of that line and you've got a great little design element that you can save as a symbol but I'm gonna go ahead and undo that right because that's not what I'm trying to do right now okay one thing I want to urge you guys to do is not be afraid to have this thing be unique and different from the source file okay you're not stuck with the image that you're working from okay in fact I think it's a lot better if you find ways to simplify it and make it unique for yourself so I'm going to zoom in here control plus in case you've forgotten let's try and make sense of uh, this mess I've created for myself so I hold the space bar down to get that, that hand so I can uh, move around okay so this one's easy because I'm just gonna combine these four shapes together so click in one drag through the others I've combined it into one shape okay um, the other thing I want to show you if there's areas that you know you want deleted like this corner from this rectangle and the same one on this side I know I want them deleted the trick is you hold alt down and notice how that plus changes to a minus sign you do the same thing just drag right through it or I think you can even just click on it and it goes away okay but then you end up with these cool shapes that maybe you wouldn't have expected like this ellipse here this very narrow one I created just to have this shape at the bottom but I notice that it's creating kind of a cool little detail on this um, segment between the thorax and the abdomen so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that section there but I am going to click through uh, combine these two shapes and combine these two shapes here okay now I'm gonna go and delete this corner as well hold alt click on it alt click okay I think I'm gonna delete this little edge as well alt alt click move this shape up a bit and see what I want to combine here now this can get a little bit tricky so I'm trying to be careful here with what I do I know I want to combine those two combine those two okay so I noticed that there is a, a little triangular shape back here and back here I believe those are remnants from another one of the shapes that we deleted up here so that's going to be a little hard to get to so what I'm going to do at this point is not use the shape builder tool to get rid of those I'm going to uh, switch to my direct selection tool and I'm going to see if I can isolate just that one little shape Now what I'll do now I will lock this shape so I've got that shape selected let me go to my layers palette I'll find it here because it's been selected I'm gonna click on the lock icon so now I believe I can select just that one shape and delete that arrow so let's continue select everything again here let me zoom out a little bit I like that shape um, I'm gonna combine these two together for sure since I played around with this and uh, ended up with a broken shape it wasn't allowing me to combine this shape with this shape so what I did instead was I held alt down selected that line and the line disappeared okay so there's you may encounter some issues like that that you're gonna have to you know employ some creative problem solving to get through so uh, let's see everything's still selected I'm on my shape builder tool and I'm just gonna continue working here let me select everything first now zoom in again shape builder tool and I'm going to combine these three shapes 
If you don't zoom in, it would be hard to miss a little detail like the one there. And again, we're having issues because of what we did with this line. So again, hold Alt, and I'm going to delete this line here. Okay, let me move to the other side and try and do the same thing. On this side, it worked better. So we, we did something a little funny up here, and it's not letting us uh, manipulate some of these shapes. But, you know, we found a workaround. So everything is fine. I'm now going to combine these two shapes. So we're simplifying our object, right, from all those millions of lines we, we had. Okay, these rounded corners here I'm going to get rid of. So Alt, click, Alt, click. Now here, let's see, what do we want to do here? I'm going to combine these two, combine these two, do the same here, and the same here. Okay, let me zoom out now and see what that looks like. Center it a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now we have these little segments of the line sticking out, so what do you all think we do? Alt, click, and that segment is gone. Alt, click, and that segment is gone. Hopefully. Oh, I might have it locked. Let's see. Nothing's happening with it, so let me... Um, hmm. There, for some reason I couldn't click on it. So it's selected, I can now just hit delete. Okay, so just a little word on workflow. Anytime you reach a good stopping point in an image, try to make it a habit of locking your layer and creating a new layer to work on. Okay, you can always come back and unlock that layer and make changes if you need to, but you don't want to accidentally mess up all your hard work, right? So I've locked layer three and created layer four, which I'll now be working on. And I'm going to have to unlock layer 3 in a little bit, but for now I want to keep it safe. So now I'm going to start working on the legs and the antenna here. Um, so let me zoom, zoom in a little bit. I tend to handle the legs of my insects a little differently. I, I found a cool little trick that I like that makes my assets unique. So I'm going to show you what I do. Um, and you guys can do it, or you can find your own way to do it. Um, so I'm going to get my ellipse tool. And I'm first going to just create a little place where those legs can attach to, whoops, messed up there, okay, and I'm going to make it with these large ovals that I can then go in and fix and change, okay, now let me select those three shapes that I just created, okay, and I'm going to go and use my reflect tool now just to keep things simple so I don't have to try and line things up on this side, I'm going to click on my reflect tool, Hold Alt down. And I'm going to click on some center point, which is easy since we do have this line down the middle. So I'm going to click on that point right there. And then I'm going to reflect it um, over a vertical axis. Right? You see with the preview where that's going to land. And I like it, but I'm going to hit copy because I want both. Okay, now you have shapes on both sides. Okay. What I need to do for this to work, I want my Shape Builder tool to work with this object and the objects over here. So I need to come back over here and unlock layer three. Okay, so now I'm going to select everything again, at least the parts that I'll be working with. Let me click on my Shape Builder tool. And I can either hold Alt and click to get rid of those lines I don't need, or I can not hold Alt and combine these two shapes and then combine these two shapes, okay? So that puts this oval or this ellipse underneath our other shape, or at least makes it look that way. This one's easy enough. I'll just click and drag there. All right, this is the same side we're having issues with. So I'm going to hold Alt, click there to delete that. And I think I can combine these three. Okay, over here I think I'll be able to do it. And there we go. Um, see, that didn't work there, so I'll hold Alt, click and it pushed those uh, ellipses back to look like they're underneath the beetle. Okay, so I'm gonna come into layers again, and now I'm gonna lock both of those layers because I don't wanna mess that up. Control minus to zoom out, and I'll start working on the actual legs themselves. So I'm gonna zoom in on one of them, 
And I'm going to show you another trick I've developed here. And you guys can decide whether you use it or not. All right, guys, so the first thing I have to do is create a new layer to work on. So I'm going to click on the new layer icon down here. And I'm going to introduce you guys to the pencil tool here. The pencil tool is great. I have it over here on my workspace because you can draw lines. And, you know, let's say you started a shape but you didn't finish it. The pencil tool is great because it allows you to pick up where you left off. You just click on a point and continue. And it combines into that uh, completed shape, right? Now that can be very useful, but for what I'm about to do with the pencil tool, it's actually a little bit of a hindrance, and let me explain why. I'm going to come up here with my pencil tool selected, and I'm going to click on this width profile up here, which is uniform, which just means it's just a, a regular line that keeps the same width all the way through. And I'm going to change that to width profile number two, which is default. Uh, this comes with Illustrator. And I'm going to start a line here, right? And I'm going to increase the stroke because I want it to be nice and fat. It's going to be the entire uh, width of that insect leg. Okay, now that looks cool. And if I and I want to continue along this part of the leg as well. But if I click here with my pencil tool and continue, you'll notice it changed that first section that I did, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do instead, let me hit Control Z to undo that. That shape that I just created, that line I just created, is still selected. I'm going to hit Control 2. Control 2 now locked that line or that line segment. So now when I come in here with my pencil tool and create the next segment, it's its own little segment. It doesn't continue. It doesn't change the one that was there before. So now I'm going to hit Control 2 again. I'm going to continue this a few times. Control 2. Control 2. And then this last section. And again, I'm not afraid to change this from what the original leg is doing, right? I'm using it just as a guide, okay? So control two again. At this point, I'm gonna switch my width profile to this uh, width profile number one, which is that, it's just a tapered line, okay? But I'm gonna take it down to a stroke of about, let's say three, okay? I'm gonna delete that, I don't need it. And then I'm gonna come over here and add some accents to the leg I just created. And I think that looks pretty cool now. Okay, so now I'm going to hold my spacebar down and scroll my image up and I'm going to do the same thing for this leg here. So I'm switching back to width profile number two, back to a stroke of eight points. And I'm going to just repeat that process, right? So create one line there, control two to lock it, create a few more segments here. Control two, switch my width profile, width profile number one, change the stroke down to three again, add some accents. Okay, I'm also going to, this is a little disconnected here, so I'm just going to create something to connect that. Control 2 again. Scroll down again and do the last leg. With profile number 2, stroke of 8. Create my shape. Control 2 to lock it. And create a couple more segments here. Okay, switch my width profile again, width profile number one, down to three points. Oh, whoops, you see how it was selected when I made those changes? If you have something selected and you change the profile, whatever you have selected is going to change to match that profile. Okay, so I need to undo that. There we go. I'm going to deselect it. In fact, I thought I had locked it and I didn't, so I'm going to hit Control 2 to lock it. Now I'll switch the width profile back. I'm glad these little mistakes happen while I'm working because you're bound to um, encounter them as well. Okay, width profile of three points with width profile number one. And I'll come in here and I'll add some more accents. What did I do here? Let's see. Oh, I'm on the wrong tool, pencil tool.
Okay, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Scroll here. I'm going to click on my layer and I'm going to go to unlock all since they're all locked right now. Now, I believe everything is selected, but just in case it isn't, you create a bounding box around everything, select everything. Okay, remember my other layers are locked already, so the only thing being selected is these legs. And as you guys probably guessed, I'm going to go to my Reflect tool, click on it, hold Alt, click on a center point. You see the preview there? It's not exactly in the right place, but it's close. So I'm going to click Copy, and then I can use my arrow keys to move it to the perfect spot which is about right there, I believe. Okay, let me click away so you can see it. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to do the antenna. So I'm just gonna come up here to, I'm gonna select my pencil tool again, go to my width profiles. For this one, I think um, I'll, I'll stick with width, pro, width profile number two. I'll go up to about a five, and I'm just gonna ignore the antenna that's there and just create my own shape. Okay, now I will click on, let's see, let me do one more line here. I like that. Yeah, no, that actually looks correct. So I'm going to click copy. You'll see they are both there. I'm also noticing one other thing. I don't like what's happening with that really long point at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that and select that. I'm going to come up here to my appearance panel and I'm going to change the corners, the way it treats corners, to this rounded corner. And you'll see that goes away. Okay. And there's my beetle, guys. Let me hide the underneath layer, and you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so one last thing I want to do is I want to create some lines on this beetle's back. So I'm going to select my line tool. While everything is still locked, I need to create a new layer for myself. I don't want to mess up any of the work I've done here. And I'm just going to draw a line from the top here, going down, and I'm going to hold Shift, so that it stays perfectly vertical. Okay. Now I want to change this up a little bit. First thing I want to do, I like the width of it, but I'm going to change that width profile again. I'm going to give myself this tapered look and you'll see what happens to it. That's a cool little detail to have on the back there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that line I just created. I'm going to go to Object Transform, Move, and I'm not really sure what size I'm working with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 0.2 inches and just see what that does. Okay, and luckily we have a preview. Uh, and I only want it moving horizontally. I don't want it moving vertically, so I'm going to put a zero there. And I accidentally put two inches. I don't want it moving two inches. I want it moving 0.2 inches. So 0.2 inches. Preview. See, and that's way too much. Uh, I want it moving a lot smaller than that. So let's go to 0 0.05 and see if that's any better. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Now I have two lines there. Remember, Control D to repeat a transformation. I'm going to go all the way. Let's stop about right there. Okay. As scary as it sounds, I'm going to go and unlock my other layers. And I'm going to create a bounding box just over this section so that everything I'm working with gets selected. You see it's all highlighted. I'm going to click Alt. And I'm going to, oh, hold on, I need my Shape Builder tool. I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to delete some of these line segments. And what's cool is you'll notice that this line then adjusted so that the taper stops here instead of up here. Kind of a cool feature. Okay, I'll do the same at the bottom here. You may have to zoom in to see some of these shapes. All right, I think that looks great. Okay, so now I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to click just over the lines I just made. I'm going to go back to my reflect tool. I'm going to hold alt down and click on some center point. And you'll see that it is reflected here. Um, it's not exactly in the right place, but it's close enough. So I'm going to click copy and then I'll just use my arrow, my left arrow to move it into place. I think about right there looks pretty good. Somehow I did with an extra little, oh I didn't delete that little segment there, I'll just click on it and delete. 
Let me zoom out and give this one last look. Okay, so I'm going to select my entire image. I'm going to open up my symbols palette, and I'm going to click on new symbol. Give it a title. I believe for me this is beetle number, I want to say 10. And if my symbol is transparent, I usually put a little slash there so I'll know that it's transparent. And then later on I'll go and make an opaque one with a white background. I'll talk more about that later. Um, I always click dynamic symbol instead of static. Uh, and then I'll click OK. And now it's been added to my symbols palette. Okay guys, I do have more to talk about. I did not um, get so much into working with images that you've uh, purchased or sourced from other places. Um, and I do want to talk about that, but this video has already gone on very long, so I'm going to break that up into a separate video. If you guys have any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them below or in the Facebook group. Thank you for watching.